We now come back to verse 7 where Jesus says, Don't bother about the times or the seasons. Be concerned about today. Because in verse 8, one of the most important things Jesus ever said, you will receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you will be the witnesses of Jesus in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria and the whole world. So the emphasis of Jesus very clearly in his last words to his disciples, because this is just before he's taken up, in his last words to his disciples, he says, the whole concentration is this. You have to be the witnesses, and the Holy Spirit I will send will be the power to enable you to do it. And, you know, I spent some time four or five years ago uh, in one of my prayer works, and I was really talking to the Holy Spirit. And I said, Holy Spirit, you know Jesus better than any of us. I want you to tell me what was the key to the power that Jesus had. And it became absolutely clear, as the Holy Spirit revealed to me from Scripture, that when Jesus was born, he gave up his heavenly power and heavenly authority and lived as a man limited, as we are limited. And it wasn't until after his baptism with John in the Jordan, when the Holy Spirit came down on him like a dove, that from that moment... He received the power which transformed his life. And what he is saying here is to these humble men, including Peter, who only days before at the trial had denied that he knew Jesus, denied Jesus three times, as you know. But Jesus is saying, When the Holy Spirit is come, he will give you the power to transform your lives so that you can fulfill this ministry. And in verse 9, of course, we come to this. And when he had said this, while they watched, he was taken up and a cloud received him out of their sight. So literally, the last commandment, the last message from Jesus is wait. They had to wait another 10 days, that's all, until the 50th day, 50 days, Pentecost 50. And what he's saying, wait, because when the Holy Spirit is come, everything will change. You who have no power in yourselves will be transformed by the same power that transformed Jesus, and you will continue the works of Jesus. So verse 10, while they watched and looked uh, towards heaven as he went up, two men stood by them in white clothes. And in verse 11, this is what the men said. They said, Men of Galilee, why do you stand gazing up into heaven? This same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall come back in the same way as you have seen him go. Now, this is quite clear. This uh, quite clearly states how Jesus will come back. He was taken from the apostles, and they saw him go. And I believe that exactly the same, when he comes back, we shall see him come back. Hmm. The result in verse 12, they returned to Jerusalem. They were on the Mount of Olives, by the way, when that happened. And 
verse 13 says, when they were come in, they went into an upper room where Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, Thomas, Bartholomew, Matthew, and James, and Simon, and also Judas, the brother of James, these 11 continued with one accord in prayer and supplication with the women and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brothers. So here we have the first gathering of what was to become the church, and it comprises not the twelve, because Judas is gone, the eleven apostles, the family of Jesus, his mother, and his brothers. It's quite significant. You know, it's very significant, the way that we don't read an awful lot about his brother, the brothers of Jesus during the Gospels, but now here they are. And to me, this is very significant. They're all there, his mother and his brothers. I'm assuming that his father probably had died because he's not mentioned any further. And then, verse 15, Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples, and it says quite clearly the number of people was about 120. It doesn't say precisely. <laughs> I think we assume that it was exactly, but it says about 120. And this is what Peter is saying, verse 16. Men and brethren, this scripture needs to be fulfilled which the Holy Spirit by the mouth of David spoke before concerning Jesus, which betrayed Jesus. So if you got it right, Peter's first comments here, this scripture has to be fulfilled, that which the Holy Ghost by David uh, said, beforehand concerning Judas, who was to betray him. Verse 17, he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. And, you know, it's very, very interesting because Judas was obviously one of the twelve chosen. And sometimes I ask the question, why, when Jesus must have known from the beginning that Judas was a thief, yes, the scripture says he was a thief because he was taking money from the common purse, and Jesus must also have known because it was prophesied that Judas would betray him. And it leads me to the inescapable fact that even in this there was a purpose because somebody had to betray Jesus in order that he would be taken and die. 